My name is Lisa, I'm one of the interpreters here, and we are going to talk all about horses. Horses during the colonial period um, were very important. We're gonna talk about how they came to America, how they developed in America, and we'll meet some of the horses at Brattonsville and see what they do around the farm. Horses have held an important role in the development of the United States from the very beginning. From a means of transportation to new lands, to farming those lands, to taking goods to market, and defending the nation, both as a colonial territory and then as a free country, horses were there for all of it. But it's important to remember that the history of the horse in North America goes back much further than the arrival of European settlers, about 56 million years further. An early ancestor of the horse, known as Eohippus, or Dawn Horse, developed in North America in the Eocene era. Much smaller than its modern cousin, with toes instead of hooves, Eohippus lived in what is now the American West and ate leaves from trees and shrubs rather than grass. About 35 million years ago, some of them began to migrate across the Bering Land Bridge. The last horse ancestors in the Americas became extinct about 8,000 years ago, but they continued to evolve and multiply in Asia and Europe. Modern horses arrived in North America, beginning with Columbus's second voyage in 1493. These horses were of Spanish or Mediterranean descent and were relatively small, hardy, and quick. They were adopted by Native Americans and spread quickly throughout the hemisphere. They were soon followed by horses from Northern Europe. A true American horse began to be developed in the 1600s, and its origin didn't have to do with work, but with leisure. Colonial gentlemen enjoyed horse racing, and tracks began to spring up in many towns, including Charleston here in South Carolina. While their English horses did quite well racing, they began to crossbreed their stock with those of the natives to get a faster horse. The most common track length in those days was a quarter mile. And when horses began to appear that excelled at that distance, the American quarter horse was born. The quarter horse became an all-purpose mount in the growing United States. They became cavalry horses, express horses, and cow ponies. Their agility, speed, and courage made them ideal for life on the frontier. Another horse to develop in early America was the Morgan. Developed by New Englander Justin Morgan, the Morgan horse was both an excellent race horse and also strong enough to pull plows or buggies and a fine saddle horse as well. The image shown here is from a racing magazine published in 1888. Draft horses, commonly used for pulling heavy loads, did not actually arrive in the Americas until the late 1800s. As agricultural production increased, stronger horses were needed to do the work. Horses were imported from Belgium, France, England, and Scotland. They helped large-scale farming succeed, but in doing so, put themselves out of a job. The early 20th century brought tractors, which eat much less than a 2,000-pound horse. Today, draft horses are mainly found working in Amish communities and on living history farms, and providing carriage rides in larger cities. Many descendants of those original Spanish horses that came over with Columbus are still with us today. The Mustang, the Chincoteague, and South Carolina's own state heritage horse, the Marsh Tacky, can all trace their lineage back to the first European horses to arrive in North America, and all have been important to our history. For example, the Marsh Tacky, and Tacky in this case just means common, was the horse of many colonial South Carolinians. Revolutionaries such as Thomas Sumter and Francis Marion rode marsh tackies, which were well suited for navigating the woods and swamps of the Carolina backcountry, easily escaping the larger English mouths of their pursuers. The marsh tacky is now considered critically endangered, but a number of Carolina horse breeders are working to bring back this living piece of our history. When you visit living history farms like Historic Brattonsville, you're sure to encounter horses that are helping to tell the story of their own ancestors. Let's take a look at some of the horses you might meet at Brattonsville. So this is Bo, and this is Stacy, and they are both volunteering to help us today. And Bo is part Morgan horse, and Morgan was a horse that was developed in early America, not, not directly until after the revolution, um, but they were starting to work their way to Morgans. A lot of horse development back then, um, particularly for saddle horses, had to do with horse racing and they were looking for fast, 
small, um, quick turning agile horses. Um, and Morgan's fit the bill. And then that was also made them a very good horse for um, military use. So Bo is a dragoon horse. He is, he's still getting the hang of some of his dragooning, but he's a very good dragoon horse. And um, well, let's take a look at some other horses we have here today. This is Pete. And Pete is a Bratton's built horse. And he would like very much to get to the bucket of feed that you can't see on camera right now. But Pete is a Belgian horse. He's a heavy draft horse. They did not have specifically Belgians, but in, in the early colonial times. But he is um, an example of the kind of horse that they would use to pull things like people. <laughs> and uh, he can pull, he's a big guy. He can pull a lot of work. These kinds of horses were actually developed in medieval times to carry knights in armor. Um, but Pete can pull the plow, he can pull a wagon. He actually, before he came to live with us, worked pulling carriages in Charleston and Savannah. So he's kind of semi-retired here. Okay. This is Sonny. If you followed our social media at all, you've probably seen some of Sonny's posts. He likes to keep people up to date on what's going on in the barnyard. And as horses go, Sonny is a good all-purpose horse. He's actually half quarter horse, which is similar to Bo the Morgan horse. And he's half Percheron, which is similar to uh, Pete, the uh, the big horse. So he is he is a little bit of everything. He goes under saddle. He pulls wagons. He is a bit of a diva. Um, and he is a, a really good all-around horse. It's hard to imagine how much bigger a draft horse is compared to a saddle horse until you see them together. Now you've met the horses here at Bradensville and you've learned a lot about the history of horses. You'll have to come out and visit us sometime. Sonny and Pete really love to have uh, have visitors come and pet them and talk to them. Um, I hope you've learned something about horses today and I hope you'll visit us soon and keep checking out Time Travel Tuesday.